quality never costs as much as it saves. In fact, quality pays off even more as years go by. And we built our modular homes to last for many years. Constructed of superior materials in a computer automated factory, our homes are better built than a site built home. Franklin Homes quality speaks for itself. So we invite you to show this video to your customers so they can see the value that goes into our quad homes. Hello, my name is Peter James. I'm Vice President of Production here at Franklin Homes. The video that you're about to see is an installation video for our Model 9001, or what we refer to as our quad. The information pertaining to this video will help you as far as removal of plastic on the roof, setup of the hinge roof sections, and completion of the dormer areas. We hope this information is helpful to you and your setup crew as you install this home. The quad sections come from the factory with a letter designation on them to avoid confusion. However, it's still a good idea to familiarize yourself with the section's relationship to each other. Please keep in mind that this home does have four sections and also please keep in mind that the weather conditions may play a part in your installation and completion of the set. What we're about to do is set uh, uh, on the small section, we use two uh, roof jacks to raise the hinge section of the roof on, on the small section. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll place, uh, we'll place both of these jacks in just a moment. We want to make sure that uh, the two things about placing your jacks is you want to make sure that you've got a good footing uh, on the base of the jack, uh, whether it's a jack that fits on the ground, about make sure it's, it's secured uh, at the ground level, and or if it's one like we use, make sure that it's uh, secured to the floor well so that the jack won't try and kick out on you when you're raising the roof section up. Also, make sure that uh, uh, the uh, top portion of the jack is securely in place on the on the ridge member of the roof uh, so that when the, when the raising it, uh, activity goes on it, everything is uh, properly secured and so that there's no, uh, no slip or, or uh, mishap on, on getting that roof out position.
one thing that might help on, uh, on some time savings when you're raising these roofs um, is when the sections are put together, uh, basically uh, similar where they're going to be set permanently, uh, what you can do is, is when you get your roof jacks placed in, uh, on one half, get the roof raised up with the sections being, the proximity of them being fairly close together, you can just swing the jacks around and put them on the other half without having to carry them to another location to raise that, raise that roof portion. A little time saving on that. Everybody up two. Everybody up two. Please note here that uh, the brackets that have to be removed or the banding that has to be removed for the support wall to be lowered into place. Uh, also uh, want to mention the walk boards that the, the setup crew is walking on. Uh, they're installed for your convenience uh, so that you don't have to walk on top of the rafters. Um, once the roof has been raised into place and the support wall has been lowered, um, and you can see here that the support wall will not go past the knee wall section and what we're about to do is raise the roof up a little bit more so that that wall will sit on top of the um, support on top of the knee wall or the support wall which it will finally rest. On securing that support wall uh, what we'll do is we'll line one end up leave the roof up just a little bit from the two plates coming together uh, secure off on one end and just ease the ease the entire roof section down uh, as you go to make sure all your plates are flush together. Once the roof has been raised into position, uh, the support wall then needs to be folded out and placed on the knee wall or support wall that that, uh, that, that wall rests on. A uh, couple things to note, um, we've changed this application on the support wall. Uh, the support wall is now going to be in uh, at least uh, four sections. Um, we're doing this for two reasons. Uh, one is uh, for safety of the setup crew, uh, it gives a, uh, a cribbing effect. Secondly, it makes the support wall easier to install on the knee wall. Bring it about, bring it about, uh, about, yeah, about six feet. Well, here's where it went last time. What we're going to do is we're going to raise uh, this first section. Uh, we'll raise the, the uh, first uh, fold section uh, and then the entire roof will come up from there together. On the C section of this house, when we raise the first hinge uh, section into place, uh, where the hinge nails are, uh, the, the roof decking on the main roof 
uh, extends out over the hen's nails, uh, and we do that on purpose. The reason we do that is so when you raise that the hen set the uh, smaller hen section into place, you can nail from the backside into the top cord of the truss, and it'll hold that whole it'll hold that whole assembly in place. And then while you're raising the uh, and while you're raising the rest of the root section. Up. What we're about to do is raise this, raise the, uh, the first root section of the home. Um, uh, we've got the, the small uh, folding section in place. Uh, as you can see, sticking out past the uh, mating wall. We fold that out first, and then we use that also to lift the rest of the root section. If, if the support wall is folded out and the knee wall hits, or the support wall hits the knee wall, then the roof section should be raised up a few more inches so that the support wall can be uh, put into place. Also, one other note, when, when screwing off the support wall uh, to the knee wall, um, either use, you can use nails or screws, but make sure that the nail is placed uh, in an area where it will hit the stud underneath the support plate. Uh, you can see Tony uh, screwing the screws in at an angle so that it will hit the stud underneath the, uh, underneath the support wall. All of our hen's roof systems, there's a, there's a metal band that, that straps from the bottom section of the truss over the, over the support wall. Uh, and that, that band has to be uh, either nailed or screwed uh, per our installation instructions that will come with the house. And the way this thing installs, we, we install the bottom section of the plant with just the staples. Uh, but the, the installer has this option of screws or nails uh, or staples depending on what he has available. Uh, the way that installs is it folds over the folds over the uh, the support wall, and then would need to be nailed or screwed through that band, and that helps with the uplift loadings of the roof uh, to keep everything in place. On our on our hinge roof systems that have more than one hinge, uh, we install these uh, these little support Hold brackets down. Hold down. Uh, that are fastened at one end. Point, point to that end there, son. Point the screw here. Fold, fold that back and forth one time. What we uh, what we use those for uh, is, is an alignment tool and as well also a support tool to keep the second hinge section of any of the roofs that we do, whether it's uh, whether it's the roof on this quad unit or if it's uh, um, uh, used on the our 32 wide uh, five and 12 roof pitches as well. There's a small second hinge section on those, uh, and then on those on those trusses uh, we have this same application. So that when that when that when that hinge section is raised into place, uh, it's used as an alignment and a support device, so that everything will come, stay in the, into into place while the sections are being married together and secured off for uh, final installation. What we do is we we pre-cut the we pre-cut the support studs that go in the gable sections of, of all of our hinge roofs. Uh, they they'll be either placed in the roof as that one uh, is Tony just installed. Or they'll be in. They'll be in with the uh, uh, setup kit that'll be inside the house. Either way, the, the studs are pre-cut with an angle. Hold hold that one up there, Tony. Put it right here. Uh, as you can see, the studs are angle cut uh, on the bottom and on the top so that they'll match this section uh, in its entirety and basically already put into place so that the, the angles allow you to 
slide those studs into place and each one has its own location and it fits because it's pre-cut, therefore there's no measuring when you install those studs. What we're about to do is raise the D section of the house. Uh, uh, there's a couple of notes that we need to make uh, uh, known here. Um, on, the, on the ridge rail of this roof, uh, we've got some additional uh, lifting members uh, that we put on at the plant that are used to lift this roof into place. Once the roof is lifted in place, those members need to be removed before the houses are permanently set together. On the C and D section, uh, uh, there needs to be noted that the, that the, the C section and the D section, uh, the, the marriage line and the roof peak are offset. Uh, we have to do that for shipping purposes uh, in order for us to install the, the bay. Uh, in the dorm area on the C section there at the plant. So that, that's the reason it's imperative that the, the shipping material be taken off the D roof before the two are put together or the roofs will never match up uh, when we're trying to get a place uh, perfect. On the, on the bay on the rear of this home, uh, the rafters over that bay are also hinged. What we've done is we've raised the rafters, put those into place. Uh, there's some uh, the support studs that go in the pre-cut that's put, they're putting in, in in the center of that section now, which will put sheet that creates OSB. Uh, and then uh, we'll do the same above the, uh, above the, the rafters and the little, the little gable peak. Uh, when they get that front complete. To complete the dormer over the bay on the C section of the home, uh, all of the parts that are needed for that completion are inside the dormer uh, on top of the roof. Um, one thing to note, when the plastic is removed over this dormer, there will be a sheet of OSB which will be laid flat. Uh, this material needs to be removed and discarded. Uh, it has no purpose in, uh, in setting up the dormer or for completion of the dormer. Uh, it's simply applied for uh, weatherproofing uh, until the dormer can be installed. Once the OSB has been removed from the top of the dormer, you'll find the parts for the dormer completion inside the bay. Uh, there should be trusses, uh, overhang box, and decking uh, inside the bay. Refer to your installation instructions for the parts and how those should be applied.
following pictures you're about to see are how to install the transition truss section from the A, B sections to the C and D sections. Uh, the roof transition uh, should be installed as follows. Um, there will be a ridge beam that will connect from the end of the C and D section. It needs to be leveled uh, and installed onto the B section. Uh, the beam will also need to be marked 24 inch on center. Uh, the roof trusses or the transition trusses are made uh, to be installed at 24 inches on center. The roof trusses or the transition trusses are also made with a pocket at the top of the at the top of the truss so that they can be securely fastened to the beam of that transition section. Uh, once these roof trusses or transition trusses have been firmly secured to the ridge beam, simply level uh, the truss straight up and down, secure it to the roof uh, at the bottom, uh, making sure to hit uh, from the cord of the truss into the truss itself underneath the decking. Uh, once those are installed, then the uh, OSB roof decking can be installed and can, the shingles can be finished or completed uh, at that point. Taking into account the valleys uh, that must be, uh, can either be cut valleys or shingled valleys, depending on your setup crew and how they, how they like to perform that operation. If we had only three words to describe our quad homes, they would be quality, styling, and innovation. The quality and styling attract buyers and satisfy them for years to come. The innovation contributes to the quad's permanence and makes the assembly much easier for you and your setup crew. Thanks for your purchase of a Franklin Homes Quad. I hope that this installation video has been helpful to you and your setup crew for installation of the Model 9001, or what we refer to as our quad. Uh, during installation, if you have any questions, uh, please refer back to this video for uh, helpful hints on dormer completion, hinge roof installation, uh, and some of the parts that are unique to this home. Uh, during installation, please keep in mind, uh, as you and your setup crews obviously know, uh, weather conditions can play a uh, real part in completion of a home like this. Uh, being this home has four sections uh, and a transition roof section, uh, just, a note, just a helpful note, please keep that in mind. Uh, during the completion, uh, if you have any questions, uh, once again, please refer back to this video, or if you run into any problems, give us a call here at Franklin. Uh, give us our service department a call at 1-800-332-4511.